these are the 0.2a notes for pre-calc. Today we're going to be solving by factoring. So first, what is a quadratic equation? A quadratic equation is something that has an x squared in it. Earlier we were working with problems that just had an x. This time we have x squared. So the first topic is going to be your basic factoring. You want to make sure that all of your problems are set equal to 0 when you factor. And then you're looking for numbers that multiply to make the 15 and add to make the 8. Some people learn how to do this using the x method. So if that works for you, you can do that. Otherwise, looking for the numbers to get 5 and 3. Both will be positive. Then in order to solve it, because you have the equal 0, you set each part equal to 0 and then solve those two small equations. For example, number two, we want to make sure we start off having it equal to zero. So I'm going to move the five to the other side. And then I'm ready to factor. So again, looking for numbers that multiply to negative 24, add to negative two. That's going to be six and four. The 6 will have to be negative and the 4 has to be positive. That's the only way that they will add to negative 2. And then just like before, we're going to set those equal to 0 and solve. And if ever I'm working a little bit too quickly, feel free to pause the video, write down what you need to, and then turn it back on and follow along. Then we're going to deal with problems that have a number in front of the x. Number in front of the x squared, excuse me. So notice right there you've got that number in front of the x squared and right here the number in front of the x squared. So what we're going to do is a method called borrow payback. In this method you're going to have three steps. The first thing you're going to do, and I'm going to color code this so you can see it as I work, Step number one, you're going to borrow. And when we borrow, we multiply. So I'm going to borrow this 2 and multiply it over by the 15. x squared plus an 11x plus 2 times 15 is 30. So that's what we mean by borrow. The next step you're going to do is factor, just like we did on examples 1 and 2. Look for numbers that multiply to 30, which would be 6 and 5 are the pair that are going to add to 11, both positives. And then step number 3, we are going to pay back, which we'll do that by dividing. So you pay back whatever number you started borrowing, the 2 at the very beginning right here. We're going to pay that back by dividing by 2. If that divides evenly into a whole number, 6 divided by 2 is 3. You'll just write it as x plus 3. If it does not, 5 divided by 2 would get me a decimal. I'm going to take my 2. I'm going to write it right in front of that x right there. So that becomes 2x plus 5. Once you have it factored, you set each of them equal to zero and solve. For example number four, we're going to need to get it equal to zero first. 
So I'm going to need to move the 7. I'll add 7. I'm also going to need to move the 4x. Unfortunately, there's no other x on this side, so I'm just going to kind of like put it right here so I don't accidentally add it with anything else. Those cancel, those cancel. I'll bring down the 4x squared. Bring down the 4x next. And then negative 10 and 7 makes negative 3. Now would be a great time to pause the video and see if you can work through the three steps on this problem on your own. Hopefully you got a chance to try it. I'm going to go through this next part pretty quickly. x squared minus 4x minus 12. Then you should have factored. Then pay back the 4. At this point, it is important that you reduce the fractions 6 fourths and 2 halves. So I'm going to write 6 fourths as 3 over 2 because I know 2 goes into 6 and 4. I'm also going to reduce the 2 fourths to 1 half. I know 2 goes into both of those as well. That's a really important step as you're factoring, so try to get in the habit of doing that. Then you can bring the 2's in front. And at the end, you would set each of those equal to zero and solve. Again, at any point, pause the video, give it a try, and then play again. Make sure that you've got it correct. Here you should get 3 over 2, and over here you should get negative 1 half. So two types of factoring on the front, and then we're going to go to the back side of this paper and we're going to do our greatest common factor, which is a third type of factoring. So for our greatest common factor, we also want to make sure it's set equal to zero. And you're looking for a greatest common factor, which is the biggest number and variable that go into each. So I look at 3 and 12 and I think what number can those both be divided by? Both of those can be divided by 3. And then do each of them have an x? Yes. So I'm going to take an x from each. I can't take x squared because that one does not have an x squared. Then we are going to divide by the greatest common factor on each term and write the greatest common factor in front of a parenthesis. Then divide. 3 by 3 cancels. x squared divided by x is x. Think about subtracting those exponents. 2 minus invisible 1 would give me invisible 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and my x's here can cancel out because it's x to the first over x to the first. Then you set each part equal to 0 still. Even though that first bit, the 3x, is not in a parenthesis, you still want to set it equal to 0. And solve. Notice you're getting two answers here. You're getting two answers on every quadratic problem. I'd say 99% of the problems you're going to have two answers on. So learn to expect that. All right, example six. We're going to start by moving the 3x to the other side because remember this does have to be set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 3x and bring those to the same side. My greatest common factor for this one, there's nothing that can divide by 2 and 3 except for 1. And 1 isn't a great common factor. I mean, if you have to have it, you can. But then we look to the x's, and each of them has at least an x to give up. So my greatest common factor will be x, or if you'd rather, 1x is fine as well. Divide both of those by x, put the x in front, and then see what's left. Here you should end up with 2x minus, here the x's cancel, 3. Then we set each one of them equal to 0, and we solve. That one's already solved. Here I'm going to add 3 and divide by 2. Problem number seven, 
We'll need to, again, move the 40 to the other side. I'm just going to do that in my head. I'm going to know it's going to be minus 40x on the left. And looking for a greatest common factor. Think about a number that goes into 15 and 40. I'm going to have my greatest common factor here be 5x. Always put the 5x, the greatest common factor, in front and see what's left. That should give us 3x minus 8. Set both equal to 0 and solve. You should be getting pretty good at doing the end part here. These last two equations are usually pretty short. So hopefully you're picking up a little bit of speed as you're doing more of those. All right, our last one, example number eight. My greatest common factor here is going to be three, but it's not going to have an x because the 27 does not have an x. Therefore, they don't have an x in common. So I'm going to divide both of those by 3, putting the 3 on the outside, and see what's left. x squared. Bring down the minus sign. 27 divided by 3 is 9. Set each of them equal to 0. And solve. When I look at the first one, I have 3 equals 0. There's no x. And if there's no x, you just ask yourself, is that a true statement or not? 3 is not equal to 0, so we can just throw that answer part out. For this one, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Solve it a slightly different way because I have x squared. Get rid of the square by square rooting. When you square root, please make sure that you put a plus or minus sign every time you square root. So that way we get an answer of plus and minus 3, positive 3 and negative 3.